Ready? Yeah. Okay, today you have a different background. Yeah, well, that was very nice actually. This one is also nice. But this one looks like as if you are sitting on the floor, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. I could not find a better, find a better one. Yeah. I actually uh, checked the photo of my wall, but that was very flat, so I thought to get uh, from online. You can make it. Like you that. can make it white. You can click that uh, background of your wall and make it white or brighter. You know, there are lots of. Uh, I, yeah. yeah. I it was very uh, distracting, like the, only the image sort of was uh, right. cut, so that's right. That's pretty good. So you, as an IT person, you keep doing funny things like this for yourself. <laughs> yeah. See, my background, I can't change it. And anything I do, it also gives me shadow. <laughs> Many people like this. They say, oh my God, yours is the only camera that has shadows. Now, if I even if I put it up here, like I'll I'll try to put it up. Like I put it up, you can you know the fan is like miles away from here. I would say, but you can see the shadow of the fan. Can you see it? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, because because of the light in your room, the yeah. maybe the tube light. Yeah, yeah. So when the rays of the light come, the fan distracts. That's why you get a flickering effect. Yeah. yeah. So well, people say it's nice. You're the only one who has shadows in it. We don't have shadows. Many people complain that their cameras cannot catch shadows. So which camera I have? I said, well, this one is dedicated for this purpose. So I bought it only for this purpose. All right, so let's uh, start. Uh, I hope everything is, oh, we're gonna start with describe yourself because I wanna make sure you are perfect in it. So grab your points and say that. Uh, so hi, my name is Sina Bhavan. You can call me by my first that is Sina and uh, I work as an IT professional. Uh, my company is based in Kukau. I have completed my education. Uh, I have done my post-graduation from Yala and uh, the University is Thapar, quite renowned university. And uh, I have done my graduation from Chandigarh. Uh, my college was MCMDAB. Uh, uh, I have done my schooling from my hometown. Uh, there's a school named ICL. And uh, it, it's, it was basically back in the hometown. So that is where I completed it. And uh, now I am focusing on learning and improving my English so that I can give the IELTS test and maybe settle up uh, in uh, abroad somewhere. Okay, very good. So keep it consistent like that and very natural sounding. Never make it look like you have uh, crammed it or prepared it thoroughly, although it should be technically prepared. Uh, but at the same time, you have to keep in mind that the next questions coming in are totally a surprise for you. So if you're going to speak uh, those ones in a normal tone, you must already have a normal tone from the very first questions. Great. No errors for me to fix. Let's talk about food. Let's talk about food and cooking since very popular with all of us. What sorts of food do you like eating most? Uh, so I am vegetarian. Uh, so I prefer all the vegetarian food. Uh, recently, I have been liking Thai food very much. Uh, I enjoy Thai noodles and Thai curries. Uh, so in my uh, near my place, there are no such outlets which sell Thai food. So I usually go out, uh, maybe uh, to a city named Chandigarh, which is a little far from my home. So usually, when I visit Chandigarh, I prefer going to the Thai restaurant and enjoying Thai food. Why? Why? Yeah. Uh, why is I think it is delicious. I really like the taste of the coconut curry. That's their, uh, that's the particular main ingredient that they uh, have in the curries. So earlier, I I actually didn't enjoy Thai food earlier. I went to US and there was a restaurant nearby my office where I usually used to go, but I never enjoyed it. But I think with time I have acquired the taste and I really enjoy it now. So I prefer having it. 
who normally does the cooking in your home? Uh, right now, in pandemic, I am doing the cooking. So usually I have a, a helper or a maid who comes and cooks when I have to go to office on my regular days. But since pandemic was there, so now we are doing it ourselves. So I made it. Do you watch cookery programs on TV? Yes, I uh, I really like to watch the Master Chef competitions that are there. I uh, enjoy how they give a different taste to a particular ingredient. Like uh, earlier, I saw somebody uh, used pumpkin to make a cake, or pumpkin to make a dessert, or it to make a different type of curry or a vegetable to serve. So I think uh, they give you a really well idea of how you can use a different, a particular thing in a different way. And also a town time bound competition. So it, it's, I enjoy seeing how people perform there. In general, do you prefer eating out or eating at home? Uh, generally, I prefer eating at home since uh, the food that is cooked by us inside our house is more uh, is better in terms of uh, it's properly washed. It's it's basically made in front of our eyes, so I prefer eating at home. But I really enjoy outside food as well, so that's a mix and match. Okay. So I would say that your answers are really flamboyant. You have a good command of English in terms of general speaking. Uh, however, definitely we need to add in more lexical resources, particularly the vocabulary, if you can add. You can add it very easily. You got the vocabulary, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so we're going to follow that I, up today. I... Yeah. What, what were you saying? I read the words yesterday, um, but I could not like uh, could utilize not them. Out. Yeah, I'll tell yeah. you. I'll tell you how to use them. Do not worry about that. It's a good question. Right now, I want you to focus on what extra improvements you can do in your current speaking. In just in your part one, do you see anything that you can improve on? Nope. I guess not. Yes, I think I can be more fluent with the with the type of sentences I actually speak. Yeah, right. Like you, the first thing that you should prepare the bullet points. This is my uh, post graduation. Graduation, like education, is the point that I should be prepared with a flow. I think right now when I speak, I sometimes miss something or add a little extra to just complete my sentence. But the sentence should be so proper that it straight away goes, not should be like this. Right. You are absolutely right. So you're going to work on that. Now, one of the things you need to do that is in today's speaking, I shouldn't really be saying this because technically you were right when you were using it. Uh, it's not a big problem for you because you were sounding very not natural. However, you are saying, uh, like you said, in the last question, uh, in general, I prefer uh, eating outside. The us was very little and 100% very natural. I mean, no examiner can really deduct marks for you in that case. But it's also something which is an evidence that this person can end up saying uh, because uh is really bad from student point of view who is doing an IELTS test. Okay, in natural life, it's okay for us to say that. It's not really okay for you to say that. Even though in today's, I must say, 100% you were natural, I still want your mind focused on it to totally eliminate it. Like you said, you need total fluency. If you totally eliminate the us, especially in the first part, that means you're fluent, you are prepared, you are aware of what you have to speak. And if you have to substitute the starting word, uh, it is well. You can use well. Well, in general, I prefer eating outside and um, I like to eat, you know, that kind of thing. The uh, is a, not an adequate response from your side. Lots of people make that mistake. And 
remember yours is 100% natural so if it is coming out natural let it come out because you are concentrating on the words sentences that is the only thing i can suggest you in your fluency in the earlier parts and you're right describe yourself your hometown your home work or studies all these familiar topics and describe your family should be ever ready so make points of them if you don't know which points to speak take from me and make points from them for example when you describe your home you don't describe there are these many rooms kitchen washrooms dining park terrace anything gardens parking outside parking inside parking back side of the house front side windows anything everything you can describe including balconies whatever the more you describe the better it sounds it doesn't have to be like that you can totally fake it up but your story must match consistently throughout the test that means if you said your house has five rooms it should say five rooms by the end of the test it just shouldn't change into three rooms otherwise you are in trouble because they, you are doing a general yeah. test they expect you to be telling somewhat the truth okay so as a catch in general we're going to move on to part 2 today and you know exactly what to do by now but i'm now going to add the element of additional vocabulary you don't have to do anything right now you just prepare as normally as you have been preparing with those four or five points at the end if you don't give me the vocabulary which is likely what is going to happen you are not going to give me the vocabulary from the list i provided then i am going to make you speak additional lines which will come on its own so you ready for the card it's going to be describe a house or apartment that someone you know lives in you should say whose house or apartment this is where the house or apartment is what it looks like inside and explain what you like or dislike about this person's house or apartment i'm going to show it to you on the screen and give you one minute about my cousin so uh he's my second cousin so he got his food in recently it it's uh, a recent built house and it's uh, it looks just like a castle it's very big it's a five room set it has a parking in the front and there's also a little garden area it has a back area which is like a washing area it's really big house uh and uh, it's it's very near my own home it's like five minutes walking so we should uh, we usually visit very often the house is very big as i told you it looks like a castle design so i really like the design of the house it's big airy it has a lot of space it has a lot of storage space as well right and uh, there are there are uh, multiple bathrooms there is a lobby uh there's a store room as well and it's also uh it also has a terrace i i really like the house i really like the terrace part it has a terrace garden uh where you can actually sit, uh, sit with your friends and enjoy uh enjoy dinner or have a day night uh, bonfire type of uh, type of a meeting and uh, we usually sit with them on diwali uh, nights and have a bonfire type of party and uh, so i really like the garden space the terrace garden and uh, the house also has a parking for cars inside there the uh, two cars can be parked so i really like that thing that uh, your car is not outside of the road but inside of the house uh these are the things which i like about the house but there are some things uh, which are really good about the design uh first is uh, it's a plain white kind of design which i don't like i like a bit of color in the house and also it's very big so it is very difficult to maintain the house which i don't like i like to be in a small place where uh, you can be connected with everybody else you can see anybody and uh, you can just look at the gate and you see people at the front the big house really difficult that a little room is at the back but somebody is coming from the front so you have to cross the whole house and come to entertain that person so i think the house is great it's big it has everything but there are a few little 
things that can be adjusted and uh, made a lot better in terms of how it is now. Okay, fantastic. I really liked it. You know why? It was almost two minutes, first of all. Only a couple of seconds less than two minutes. So we consider that two minutes pretty much since you were already trying to stretch it out. But as you can see from your conversation yourself, you are really stretching it. Uh, definitely the way you are stretching it, uh, it's clear that you want to produce far more lines, but uh, something is not letting it happen at the moment. It's a very, relatively very easy topic. So overall, fantastic. You're going to get maximum marks for it. However, it is lacking extra vocabulary, which we're going to add just now. And I would say that you didn't have to rush to describe that house. It's one of my cousin's house. You know, we can give introduction. I'm sure you made up the points. I'm going to show you. Oh, I don't have it on the screen. Whatever happened to that. Normally, I have it on the screen. Fine. So I'll just explain it to you rather than bringing up the board. Because you know how it's, my system is very slow today. And if I put up the board, it might take longer. I wanted to draw on your wall in the back, but somehow the drawing pencil is also disappeared. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm not gonna draw there. All right, so here was what you can do. Give an intro. When you make that circle or when you write those, actually you're writing points, you can write at the top intro for the first few times. This will always remind you, just write the points first, then on the top, go back and write intro. So that always introduce your first point. That gives you ample of expansion time, especially if you know you're going to repeat sentences the way you were doing. And your repetition was great because none of the sentences matched with the previous sentence. And that's excellent command of English. However, why lose it just like that when you can actually give, take more time producing the introduction? For example, in this case, you could have said tons of things. Oh, there are many houses I like. It's a difficult and easy question for me, actually, at the same time. I, I know one of my grandparents' house or one of my uncle's house is a good one, fantastic one to describe. And uh, there's, of course, uh, another of my uh, cousins is a good sibling or she's a good sibling. That house is also fan fantastic. But I think uh, the one I would like to describe is none other than and then you introduce your own cousin's house. So this way I have actually expanded and given newer lines, completely different lines. And my point is still waiting at my eye level. So, I mean, that way you could have hit the two minutes dead on without having to worry about it. You already hit the two minutes. So almost, almost, yeah, it's almost in every... Uh... Like it comes, so we can have this simple. There are many of these which I like, but today yeah. I would like to yeah. talk about. Definitely, not almost all. I think I haven't seen one cue card where you can't. I mean, some students find it difficult. Right. So, if you do find anywhere difficult, just start where the topic is. You don't want to waste time introducing it. But if you find it easy, like in this case, introduce so that you don't have to worry about but don't stay too long from the points because remember the points are the main thing these should be spoken right away within one one and a half minutes so in case they say stop your points are covered and you do not lose bands for missing any of those points right that is number one that is still number one the way you are speaking is still number one remember that let's go first and check the points describe a house yeah you did someone you know who lives in yes cousin whose house this is cousin did you give the name of the cousin or anything no not necessary anyways where the house or apartment is, did you say it five minutes from my own home five minutes from my home that's a good one what it looks like inside yeah you describe lots of things in it yeah. and explain what you like or dislike in fact you explain lots of things you like and some things you also dislike about uh, so it was perfectly covered. See, all the points were neatly covered up. You cannot be deducted for any marks because you're not speaking of points. 
There was very good flow. There was great fluency. Clearly, you're not even pausing for a thought, pausing for a second. Spontaneity was there. So extreme fluency is there. You're almost like me in it in terms of speaking, except you're just lacking vocabulary. So after the intro, let's lift up the vocabulary right now. This is what you will have to do every day, apart from adding the intro. Immediately when the examiner is speaking that topic, you should know which of the five categories it belongs to. So can you tell me today's cue card which category it belongs to? Eight. No. Well, this is not exactly a place. You can say it's a place. You could use place vocabulary in it. How about object? Did you see object vocabulary there? Right. So what you should have really done technically and do it from tomorrow is you go and open up your PDF for object and keep it open on another screen on the side if you have the ability to do that or print it out and keep it in front of you. Okay. So now let's say you've spoken one and a half minutes and you know now you're starting to repeat sentences um, and you want some vocabulary to get that additional score. Additional score is now where is the problem for you. you know why? I'm gonna give you seven bands for today's speaking, but I'm going to hold the rest. Okay. Why? You have to take them. So how are you gonna take them? You're gonna start adding vocabulary. After one and a half minutes of speaking, you know you have said all the points that are related to this cue card and you've handled it well, but you've not added uh, extreme vocabulary. But you knew right away it's object. So you go object and you look at all the vocabularies. Now, can, is it possible for you to open that vocabulary in front of you? Okay, so now in the same context, I just want you to make one line per vocabulary and move on and make the next line until I say stop. Do it. As if you have already spoken one and a half minutes. Now you're just looking at the vocabulary. That's your next point. And make a line, go to the next one, go to the next one, continuously. Let's see how much you can do. Uh, so I find that my cousin's house is an elegant example of modern architecture. Since it's steady, it has everything. And uh, it's a marvelous house, a new marvelous house. And, uh, uh, there's fabulous pieces of uh, furniture in his house. Fantastic. Stop right there. That is exactly what I want. You see the brilliance of it? The first vocabulary you put, two others came out. Architecture and another one came out of your mouth. It starts okay. to happen. Magic starts to double and triple the vocabularies. This is exactly what I want. Even in the next one, you introduce and you put so many elements in it. You don't even know. You are thinking you are producing only three vocabs. They're doubling and tripling. You don't even know about that. So you see how easy that is? Do that right yeah. away. By the time you have practiced so many times, there are only five. You would have practiced so many times. By that time, you will already have 10 to 20 vocabularies set in your mind and they will just start coming out automatically and they will come out anywhere not just at the end of one and a half and they, you could start producing them right away and that's the brilliance of it this way you will score higher than the bands you're already uh, eligible for trust me i'm go i'm not going to stop there for with you i'm going to take you all the way to eight eight plus bands right here you are going to say thank you, sir, after your test is over. Trust me, after you get the pants. I've handled like you so many of them, and they all love me till to date. So thank God we're going to do that. That's not the only place where I want you to stop, but right now I'm going to stop it there. Later on, I'm going to force you to add extra tenses, which I may have mentioned it earlier. How we can do it, yes, you remember that. Well, we'll come to that point because it is your duty to show them in this two minute time frame or rather in the 14 minutes of interview that you know all the tenses. They're not going to tell you, hey, speak the 12 tenses, speak the 14 tenses. They're they are just there to listen to you. In fact, they're recording it. 
So just like the uh, the vocabulary, we will work on those ones also. But right now, this is sufficient for you to get the extra high. We're going to stop here and go to part three discussion topics. So let's talk about different types of home. What kinds of home are most popular in your country? In my country, there's a mix and match of different types of homes. Uh, like right now in my hometown, we have uh, houses which have terrace with them. But uh, the place where I work, that's a different type of structure. They have flats. So there's a high rise building which has a number of flats, and inside those flats, there are two BHKs, three BHKs, or one BHK, whichever you prefer according to your size. So these are the two prominent structures that are common in my country. Okay, very good. Look at the number of vocabularies you put in there automatically. What do you think are the advantages of living in a house? rather than an apartment uh, i really enjoy having the terrace the terrace is a great thing that you can have a terrace garden or you can have a bonfire type of night with your friends or uh, people enjoy the company with uh, i think the apartments are the, don't have that type of structure since there are no terrace there are only balconies and uh, since it is a high rise uh, area high rise building so sometimes the if suppose the lift isn't working then it's very difficult for you and if you have uh, old age people living with you it becomes very difficult in that situation so usually there, these problems are handled but still that's that's something which can be difficult in, if sometimes the situation comes so if you live in a house that's uh, basically on the ground floor or maybe on the first where the rooms would be so that is pretty easy okay good enough however i want you to change the starting you say uh very loudly and uh, i want you to completely switch the starting one instead of that you will use well instead of saying uh i think there are many advantages you will say well there are many advantages and if a uh comes out after well, it's okay for now, but it will go away if you start substituting it by course. Only for the starting. Well is much better than a. Uh. A, it is a real word. B, it's totally allowed in IELTS, not only in the starting position, but even in other sentences, especially for speaking. Therefore, if, the, if speaking is actually giving you one word, why use a, uh, which can look a little bit negative to your preparation so in the starting take take your time but take it with well not with a uh. okay so like what do you think are the advantages uh i think there are lots of advantages good enough because it was very natural in your case but the uh was very loud and takes a long time so i want you to 100 percent substitute it with well by force you will speak once or twice, it's okay. But if you keep speaking well, it will become permanent and you will never speak uh, again in the study. So it will be like this. Well, I think there are lots of advantages of it. Do you think that everyone would like to live in a larger home? Well, I think it depends upon the person I usually enjoy being in a small home, not a very big one. Uh, in small home, you are uh, connected uh, if you are two, three people living together. So you usually keep seeing them whenever they are crossing your room and stuff. In larger houses, uh, it's difficult to see people moving around because it's too large that uh, everybody usually likes to be in their own rooms. Also, if you see the smaller houses are easier to maintain, and the larger houses need a lot of maintenance in terms of cleaning, in terms of uh, having a lot of furniture. So that's a bit a cost that they add, but smaller houses are usually small and they don't need a lot of space. So I prefer having the smaller house. Let's talk about finding a place to live. How easy is it? To find a place to live in your country? Well, it's not that easy. 
easy to find a place. Uh, I would tell, I would say it's easy uh, and also expensive. So let's say how it's easy. Uh, currently, there are a lot of options. You can meet the dealers. You can search the place online. You can talk to the friends. They somehow have some differences. You can help find the find the house. So these these are the things with which you can find the house. But ultimately, sometimes you land up in a place which you don't really enjoy. So in that terms, it's difficult because uh, sometimes you're not aware of the place where you are uh, taking up. Or renting the house, maybe, or planning to live in the house, or buying the house. You have the options. You know the place. Somebody got you there, but you are not sure how well you will enjoy. It. So, this is the difficult part of finding the home. Good. Do you think it's better to rent or to buy a place to live in? It's a debatable question. Some people think it's better. Save money and not to have maybe a loan adding for a longer period of time. Whereas some people think that uh, having an asset like home is a really plus point, and uh, that is like one of the life thing that you want to achieve. Uh, so for me earlier, I was in the impression that uh, renting is better than having a home. But with time, I realized that uh, you should always have a place to live in. Which you can set up by phone, and uh, you can have it the style that you want, the things that you want. Because in a rented house, you can't make a lot of changes. You can't change the structure. You can't change a lot of things. But in a own home, you can do everything that you want. So I think I would prefer having the own house rather than renting a place. Do you agree that there is a right age for young adults to stop living with their parents? Uh, I think I think there there is an option. You can always uh, go out and uh, have your own life, live at your own terms, uh, go out maybe in the metro city to live. But I think in in your life you should always have a priority for your parents, and you should always be in touch or live with them for the, some point of. Time in the year, you should spend your uh, maybe a month or a two from the whole year with your parents, so that they don't feel the distance has increased so much that they can't get in touch with you, or you have got so busy with your life that you are taken away from them. So I would prefer, uh, even if you want to live without them and you want to uh, maybe have your own life, your own career, you want to pursue everything, but you should always have time for them. In a year or in some months, you should spend. Okay, that's it. That's the end of your speaking for today.